Alright guys, so as you guys can see here, we got a problem. The clutch is just flapping freely. Now, I had a feeling something was wrong, and I suspected that my clutch cable was on its way out. This is actually a Ford clutch cable, I do believe. I don't remember exactly if it's a Ford. I'm like 99% sure it is, but I was missing a lot of shifts. The car just felt really stiff and weird, and I did a second gear pull after adjusting it, and this... was the aftermath. As you guys can see here, we completely shredded the clutch cable, so we're going to go ahead and get this replaced with a Ford clutch cable. I'm pretty sure this is a Ford clutch cable. Um, <laughs> that sucks. I thought it was the clutch. I hope it ain't. I hope it's just a cable replacement because that's what it looks like, but yeah, that's not good. So we're going to have to go ahead and get this replaced. Yo, welcome back to the channel everyone. Now in this video, I have a lot of updates for you guys. Both good and both bad, depending on how you look at it. Honestly, it's good for me. So let me go ahead and explain what's going down with not only the Mustang, but also the FRS, because I do have an update on that as well. Now you guys saw in the intro clip, I completely shredded my clutch cable. That was actually about a couple minutes after I did the little POV drive for you guys. I did a pull and just shred at the cable so let me go ahead and show you guys what it looks like now because we got that fixed so if you can excuse my dirty engine bay you guys can see here that i have a ford oem clutch cable in the car right now before it was like a bbk clutch cable that was the cable that was put in the car uh, actually the same cable that was on the car previously when i changed the clutch from the first mcleod clutch that was in the car when i did buy it changed it to the street clutch uh we didn't change the cable uh i completely completely forgot about that i for some reason, it didn't click. This was a cable car, and it would probably be a good idea to change the clutch cable with the clutch. Didn't do that. It lasted a couple months after I changed that clutch. Six months, for that matter. Uh, but it was time to go ahead and replace it. So I put the Ford OEM clutch cable in there. The car feels like an entirely new car. Like, my reverse works now. Somehow, the car just feels just really, really stout driving-wise. driving, driving -wise. Um, it catches at the very top, which honestly I do like. I like the new feel of it. It's just the clutch itself, it feels a lot heavier than it did before, but that's obviously because it's a brand new cable. So just gonna get used to it, but I am enjoying it. Um, I'm gonna actually go ahead and get in the car right now, just so you guys can see, I mean, how heavy it is. Because before, if I were to go ahead and press my foot down on the clutch cable, there'd be some play. There's literally like no play at all. Like this is a very, very stout clutch cable and I'm really enjoying it. So if you guys are doing a clutch job, remember, <laughs> I completely forgot about this. Don't know how I did. This is a cable car. Make sure you guys put the Ford OEM parts back on this vehicle because these 9904 Mustangs, they don't like to act right when you put like aftermarket you know engine components that are the bare minimum the bare necessity now with all that being said we're gonna transition over to the frs a lot of you guys probably don't even know that i actually have another car you guys can see here this is the engine bay uh we have a Gretti turbo on this car this is a t518 z turbo official Gretti turbo not you know the uh not the rev kids It's a turbo FRS. I blew the head gasket on that car. Decided just to go ahead and freshen up the whole motor. We got a built motor in there. That car should be ready to be picked up literally in like two and a half, three weeks. I've already seen pictures. Uh, the built bottom end on the car. Obviously, it was a completed short block from IAG. 
Uh, the head studs already on the car. We're just literally putting the heads back on it and dropping the motor and just reinstalling half of the turbo kit and that car will be ready to go. Now, this is part of the bad news that some of you guys might not like, but honestly, I'm doing it for myself because I have an opportunity to acquire one of my dream cars. Now, what I'm gonna be doing um, almost immediately after I do get that car back, I'm probably just gonna do just the mandatory break-in miles of it because when you do install a brand new motor, obviously with the short block, you have to do that 50 mile break-in, change the oil, and then you have to do an another uh, 500 mile break-in and then change the oil. After I do that break-in process, or honestly, depending on if somebody just wants to just go ahead and just take it uh, after I do the 50 mile break-in, I am actually gonna be selling that car. Uh, that car will not be on the channel. Um, I love that car, but after going ahead and just jumping into the Mustang, it's just something that I knew was gonna happen as soon as I started modifying the two valve. I knew that I was gonna fall out of love with that car. And at this point, I just can't see myself dropping more money on that because it just doesn't really make any sense. Now, I am gonna be selling that car for, I'm like 99% sure I'm gonna be selling it for an 04 Cobra. Now, if you guys know, before I even bought the two valve Mustang, before you guys even knew that I had a new Edge Mustang in general, because I had a V6 uh, convertible automatic car as my first car, the Cobra was my dream car. So being able to sell the FRS and essentially get the Cobra is something that I'm definitely gonna be doing. So I know a lot of you guys might be upset. I know FRS content has been lacking on the channel for like damn near over a year. It actually has been over a year now. I'm gonna be selling that car um for a cobra so yeah i know some people are gonna be upset but again it's kind of what i want to do it's my dream car i know a lot of guys that have the new edge mustang stretch the two valves say oh the cobra's my dream car literally it's been my dream car even before i had the v6 mustang and before i had this two valve mustang i originally wasn't even going to modify this car this is going to be my daily driver while i was modifying the frs but you know one thing led to another and you know we're in a situation now that we're uh this build's about to get pretty spicy so let me know what you guys think about that uh, my mind's pretty much made up right now the only way i'd potentially keep the frs is if like i don't know i don't think i'm gonna keep it like i'm like 99 percent sure that i'm going to be selling the car so yeah there's that now with all that being said i know some of you guys are probably going to be upset most of you guys probably don't even care because uh <laughs> That car has been on the channel for quite some time. I know a lot of you guys are Mustang fellas now. You guys are probably ecstatic that I'm getting a Cobra, which I am ecstatic because that's my dream car. Um, I do have an update on the two valve, specifically the built motor. Now, I talked to the machine shop and the sleeves are done. The motor is completely sleeved. Um, if you guys are unaware, like we're going all out. Uh, we got a sleeved 4.6 liter, it's still a two valve car. It's gonna be an aluminum block. Uh, that motor the sleeves are done and they're in the process of going ahead and putting in the rods the pistons the crank and obviously the arp side bolt so that short block hopefully will be ready to be picked up um, within the next couple of honestly I, I don't really want to put a time date on it because i have no idea i know the machine shop that is building my motor they specialize in you know mod motors and also coyotes they have a couple other builds in there which are pretty interesting i'm not gonna lie like somebody i don't want to go ahead and give out too many details because i know a lot of you guys that watch the channel are, are kind of local I, I found that out pretty quickly but there's a pretty badass three valve build in there right now so yeah somebody's going to be putting down a lot of horsepower with a three valve and hurting a lot of feelings so they're in the process of finishing that up and i'm um, doing mine so i'm not going to put a, a date on when that short block will be done but when that short block is done um there is going to be a slight change of plans for the two valve not the long term but short term uh goals for this car because honestly i feel like i'm moving like way too fast with this car what i don't want to do is like build this car up too quick and just kind of just not enjoy it because that's kind of what i did with the frs i built that car up way too fast and i think that's probably the reason why i fell out of love with it like it was never my dream car it was like one of those cars that you purchase to kind of like get used to something and learn something because i bought that frs to learn how to drive manual because i didn't know how to drive manual before i got that car it's a 200 horsepower car so i figured it'd be a, a great 
car to learn how to drive manual and kind of just you know get into modding cars and obviously one thing led to another super uh actually i bought a supercharger for that car didn't work out seller sold me a completely blown unit bought a turbo for that car and we did we put in work with that car that car was it, it was for what it was it was it was damn fun like I, I enjoyed it it's what we started the channel on honestly and then you know obviously the head gasket failure um that happened literally a week after i bought the two valve and then started messing with the two valve bought a supercharger and you know one thing led to another and you know we're here right now so yeah i kind of want to go ahead and just slow down and just enjoy this car as much as i can and then just go ahead and just turn it up if that makes any sense i think a lot of you guys can agree with that because we've been we've been, we've been going pretty quick i lost a lot of you guys commenting man you've been doing a lot to this car in like a very short amount of time and like it's true because like once i get that ball rolling with things like it just it keeps rolling and i don't really get to experience and enjoy a lot of things that you know a lot of other people can um with you know a less modified car if that makes any sense i know a lot of you guys can definitely understand what i'm saying now a lot of you guys might be wondering what do you mean you're taking the build slow it's not really slow but let me go ahead and explain now because this build took a lot longer than expected because of the supply chain shortages and manpower we're going on nine months and obviously the short block is not in the car and it's not even yet being done assembled now there are some components of this build that i purposely did not go ahead and buy off rip because i figured something like this could happen and i did not want to go ahead and like sink 3500 four thousand five thousand dollars into parts for this car that i technically would not have access to until an unknown period of time those being the heads now i essentially have everything to go ahead and get this car up and running minus the heads and you know some of the other you know minor things like gaskets but the meat and potatoes the short block the cams the fuel systems we got that all good to go now because i'm not going to be going ahead and going for eight nine hundred a thousand horsepower off rip it's not really smart to do that anyway i mean i've never been in a 600 horsepower car driven one for that matter so we're not going to go ahead and jump right into that that'd be foolish um, this car makes like high fours 500s we're not going to go ahead and do that right now we're going to go ahead and take this car slow and we're going to just make 600 650 wheel the way it is with the built short block the fuel system e85 and that's it now what is essentially going to happen is we are going to be dropping the stock heads as well as the stock cams on the built short block but we are going to be putting in springs and retainers with a triple pump fuel system set up for e85 and we're going to run it just like that now because i actually purchased cams that are not going to be specced for the stock heads we're not going to be able to use those yet when i decided to go ahead and upgrade the heads in this car to obviously trick flows we can go ahead and drop those in but theoretically throwing in those aggressive cams stock heads it's just not going to work out the car most likely will actually lose power so we're just going to go ahead and run with that setup um 17 pounds of boost should make around 600 horsepower maybe a little bit more uh, what I'm essentially going to be doing, because I'm not going to be spending that money on the heads, I'm either going to go ahead and drop that into the Cobra <laughs> for modifications, or I'm going to go ahead and swap out the transmission in this car for a T56, which is theoretically what I should do. I should just set this car up for success when I'm ready to go all out, because the build just took a lot longer than i expected like i said we're going on like nine months i bought all this stuff in like january like literally the beginning of january i expected this build to be done like around july in all reality but obviously things happened that were out of my control shortages manpower you know that didn't happen it is what it is so i have a new plan of attack because i don't like to be hung up on like one thing for too too long especially when I don't have a date on when things could be done. That just kind of bothers me a little bit. Again, I'm not like upset with anybody. It's just the way things are right now, it's unfortunate. 
but we're gonna just make the best out of it. I'm kind of downplaying this, but the, in, in all reality, it's still not bad at all. I mean, 600 horsepower and a two valve, I could put in work with this. People have made really good power. Stock head, stock cams, built bottom men. Mind you, the compression is gonna be turned up as well, and we're gonna be on E85, so it's still gonna be a solid setup. Might not make 800, 900 horsepower, but I mean, 600 horsepower on this car, hey, I'm excited to go ahead and have fun with it. And I'm gonna have a Cobra as well. I mean, you can't go wrong. And the best part about it is I can always upgrade and the motor will be ready to handle that abuse. Now, something I'm also contemplating on doing as well and why I'm excited to go this route is because I'm trying to go for, you know, high horsepower in the long run, I don't think I'm gonna stay with the centrifugal supercharger route. Theoretically, a turbo makes the best power with what I'm trying to do. So we'll see. Um, I might try to send in this head unit to Vortec and see if I can get like a true TI trim. This is actually like an S trim internals in there. Try to get a true TI trim or maybe even a YSI and uh, throw it in here with the stock head stock cams built bottom in E85 and just turn the boost up until it makes you know 650 and then just call it a day and enjoy it at that level enjoy the cobra and then uh upgrade you know down the line i think that's well not think that is what i'm gonna be doing i already talked to my engine builder i already talked to the shop that's kind of like the game plan right now uh, when i get the cobra um definitely have some modifications in mind on what i'm going to be doing with that so uh Stay tuned. Now, I know this is probably not the video you guys wanted to hear, but in all reality, it's really not bad news. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section of this video. Um, taking it slow, would you guys do that? Or would you guys just go all out, drop that money, and just, you know, push 800, 900 horsepower? I'm really curious on what you guys would do, but in my situation, because things just took so long, and I also want to get my dream car, I think it just makes sense for me to just get what I want to get. And obviously, 600 horsepower i'm really downplaying 600 horsepower like in a two valve that's that's crazy that's really crazy to me i i shouldn't be doing that that's crazy because 600 horsepower is definitely nothing to, to you know shrug um you know with the stock head stock cam setup so hope you guys do enjoy uh, the cobra that i do plan on picking up i'm gonna make a video on that you know when the time is right but i'm letting you guys know um the FRS, that build is pretty much done. Um, that car will be sold and I will be picking up uh, a Cobra with the specs that I want. And then I mean, I'm just gonna enjoy that and continue um, what I'm doing right now. Now, I'm still gonna go ahead and chip away uh, with this setup. I do wanna go ahead and get a PI intake manifold. So if you guys are selling a PI intake manifold, uh, let me know, hit me up on Instagram for a good price, slightly used or brand new. I'll definitely go ahead and pick that up from you because I do want to go ahead and get rid of the doorman. I'm sick and tired of that fucking intake on this car. So please, somebody got a PA intake manifold. Bang my line. But yeah, it's been your boy Ears POV, and I'm going to catch you guys in the next one. Deuce.